and they're running away. We see all kinds of different little monsters and whatnot, and then we meet Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks. Uh, you and- know what I wish I had? What? That lollipop. Yes, I wish we had I the, love the Jar Jar. sucking Jar Jar's tongue. It's time to hack the movies. Today, we're talking about tapes. Talking about tapes. This episode is brought to you by Omaze. Omaze is a great company that gives away one-of-a-kind prizes and experiences while donating money to charities across the world. And I'm here to tell you about the latest prize they're giving away and how you can enter for a chance to win. You can style and profile in a brand new Tesla Model X Plaid. It's got a nice 17-inch cinematic display if you want to sit back and watch a movie or play some games while you're parked under the stars. It can fit up to seven people, has a tri-motor electric engine that can make you go from zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds, full self-driving capabilities, and an awesome 22-speaker sound system. It's also got those cool doors that swing up. Those things are awesome. I always feel like I'm going into a time machine when I get in one. But that's not all. By entering for a chance to win, you will support charities like Give Power, who help 2.2 billion people around the world get safely managed drinking water, food security, and light. You will also help support 501c3, who help to build a cleaner and sustainable future through innovation and storytelling. For your chance to win a Tesla Model X Plaid and support Give Power and 501c3, go to omaze.com slash hack the movies. Hello, Tony. Hello, Johanna. <laughs> oh, man, we just had some lovely Taco Bell. Love the Taco Bell. Speaking of which, uh, it got me nostalgic for that Taco Bell display of all the Phantom Menace toys that Taco Bell gave away. Uh, and you know what? I thought uh, this is the anniversary of when Phantom Menace came on video, April 4th, 2000. How many years has it been? 20 something, 22, oh, okay. probably. Okay. Uh, yes, and I know we've made fun of these movies in the past, but my audience. Who? Because keep- I didn't. The audience keeps telling us that we're wrong. Uh, we need that to, you're wrong. That I'm wrong. I need to go back and look at this series and give it the respect it deserves. With a new lens. With a new lens. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, they always tell us, like, modern Star Wars run by Disney. They only care about money and wanting to sell things. Yes, that's how my poor collection started. So, yes. Yes, yes. yes. They just want to make a quick buck and use yep. the property to sell merchandise. Uh, and they don't care about, like, the franchise stuff. Not like George Lucas did uh, when he made this movie that he made because he just had a burning desire to tell the story of the origin of Darth Vader. And it definitely wasn't made for any cynical purposes. Not like Kathleen Kennedy, am I right? That bitch. <sighs> oh, well, that was a little <laughs> <laughs> was a little bit more intense, but uh, okay. <laughs> um, the Force is female. Do you not agree with her? Oh, no, the force is female. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this was a big part of our childhood. Yep. Uh, impossible to avoid growing up. Uh, although some people did. I don't know how. Um, yeah, and I, I watched it again for the first time in a while. And I have new things to say about it. Cool. Did you see this when it came out? I did. In theaters. It took me a while to see it. You know, I saw this in theater. I saw all three in theaters, actually. No, so did I, but like when the first one came out, like all my friends were seeing it, and like my parents like weren't able to like go to the theater. They were like they were too busy, so I had to like wait like a month uh, or two. I used to always go to the uh movies with my grandma, so <sighs> I was spoiled. Damn it. Yeah. Anyway, I remember liking it, and I remember not liking it. But now let's see. Let's like you see. remember liking it as a child and then you rewatched it as an adult and you're yeah. like, wait, what the hell? But after all the fans told me that I'm wrong. No shirt, by the way. Yes. After all, I now like the Mandalorian. Uh, now that all the fans have told me that I'm wrong, let's get into Star Wars Episode One: The, the Phantom, Phantom Menace. Menace. Uh, yes, so it starts off. Apparently, the Jedi are there to uh, do like a trade negotiation deal yeah. with the Trade Federation because the Trade Federation is setting up a blockade over Naboo yep. to stop. Trade to, to, to stop, trade, stop trade and the Queen you know, trade is very, Federation, right? Yeah. yeah, the Queen's very upset yeah. about this. So the Jedi are there to negotiate the 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 treaty or whatever. Um, and it's important to note that when they first arrive, 
we see one of the uh, common enemies that'll show up at the end of the film early on. And of course, I'm talking about the droid starfighters. <laughs> now, these are really cool. Uh, they kind of look like early X-Wing designs a little bit. Um, do you do course, anything with the little pulley things there? They, they do, but I wanted to show something off. Uh, this really broke new ground in the uh, Star Wars canon. Um, canon? Yes. So, so you look at this, right? And you're like, oh, that's just a spaceship. Right, right, but... <laughs> but wait, no, there's more! <laughs> there's more. Nine-year-old Tony couldn't believe this. It actually, this ship, it can turn its wings into legs and then pop a head out so it can walk, even though it can fly and hover. It can walk. So yes, that's the uh, droid starfighter, and this is like a... Maybe it's like floaty engines are taking out, so then they have to morph to walk. Maybe, maybe. But yeah, this is a uh, a cool little handheld thing. They made a couple of these where you can fly around like that. And you're like, pew, 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 Ready, ready, ready? Yes. Nothing's happening. Okay, that didn't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no! Right, destroyed everything over here. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no, the... the... No! Oh, no! They're killing everybody! <laughs> Why is this dude just sitting here? I don't know. Why is he just sitting? He couldn't stand up. So, <laughs> yes. So, yes. Uh, that was our first hint of the droid army. We're going to see more Wait, of them. Wait, over Jar Jar. Okay. The droid army. Wait, why does he have a... Oh, no, that's not like... I was about to be like, why does he have a lightsaber? <laughs> We're going to see more of these at the very end. I'm glad yep. they introduced them early on. So, we finally meet uh, the Jedi. And as a kid, I was like, I can't wait to see young Obi-Wan. We, we heard all these stories of him and Anakin uh, training Anakin. But then the movie, uh, and I think this is where Ryan Johnson got the whole subverting expectations thing. Mm. Instead of focusing on Obi-Wan, they focus on a new character. Qui-Gon Jinn, a brand new character. And I have the uh, episode one figure here. This is uh, Qui-Gon Jinn on Naboo. Mm. Um, he comes with a lightsaber and handle. So if you want to play with him handle? just... Yeah, so you could play with him with just the lightsaber, or you could play with him with just the handle, like without the lightsaber part. So if you just want to have your Qui Gon Jinn action figure holding a handle, but without the laser beam, you can. Oh. Yes, and of course, a lot of these figures had the uh, Comtech chip. Uh, you attach it to a Comtech reader. Sold separately. I don't have the reader, but I have the chip. Shame. Uh, and it actually says some things. You want to hear what they say? Yeah. Okay. First off, let's talk about who Qui-Gon is, because it gives you a little information here. Do you know a who he's played by? Liam Neeson. Mm -hmm. Yes. A wise and powerful Jedi, Qui-Gon Jinn discovers young Anakin Skywalker, proving to be a pivotal event to the future of the Jedi and to the entire galaxy for hmm. generations to come. And here we have Qui-Gon Jinn's ComTech chip lines, even though it shows a picture of Obi-Wan. Um, it says, these Federation types are cowards. Oh, I got to do it in the voice. These Federation types are cowards. That's your Liam Neeson? Can you can you do a Liam Neeson? No, I can't. Oh, okay. That's why I'm not even going <laughs> to. Okay. These negotiations will be short. I sense an unusual amount of fear for something as trivial as a trade dispute. As a standoff, let's go! And of course, battle droids! I remember when Qui-Gon Jinn said battle droids. <laughs> so yeah, Qui-Gon Jinn, uh, he's the actual mentor, and Obi-Wan Kenobi is just some guy. But again, you know, it, I, it's building up to Obi-Wan in the next film becoming the Obi-Wan we want to see. Mm. I mean, he doesn't actually do that in the next one. He does that in like the third film, kind of. Hello there. So, we also, at this point, get our first glimpse of Darth Sidious, who we know is actually the Emperor, but this is before Palpatine. the Empire, yes. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting there and being like, wait a minute, why isn't his face messed up? And I was very confused by that. And it took several years to figure out why his face wasn't <laughs> messed up. Uh, what do you think of the name Darth Sidious? Sure. It's just, you need to know that he's a very insidious person. Mm. So it's it's good that they named him Sidious. So you think of the word insidious and you go, that's bad. I know he's the bad guy. What do you think about the, the Nemoidians, the Trade Federation? My lord, is that legal? I will make it legal. And the Jedi? <laughs> Nothing wrong with them. Uh, <laughs> let's keep going here. Uh, so they are 
waiting to negotiate with the Trade Federation, mm -hmm. but then Sidious is like, no, no negotiations. Kill the Jedi. I mean, he could just say send them home, but he decides he's going to kill them. And then, Johanna, we see some lightsaber action from Qui-Gon Jinn. Finally, we've got some good stuff going on now. Yes. Yeah. Kind of like... Oh, my God. Is that the deluxe Qui-Gon Jinn with lightsaber handle trigger battle swing? You can try him. Ready? Whee! Oh, my God. Look, Johanna, I know that's probably worth several thousand dollars in the box, but... I'm going to open that bad boy up. Yeah. Let's open it up. I got to see. I need to play with the handle. Here. Here. I got scissors. Or you can open it the correct way. Oh. Just pull on the little plastic. Oh, man. Make sure you do it on camera. It's blocked. It's blocked. I want people to see you unboxing. Oh, oh. that's cool. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> you're, you're enjoying, it a little enjoying it a little too much. Mm. So that's the handle. And it turns into a lightsaber. Whoa! Oh, it's, like, lightsaber. it's like a little green lightsaber. Oh, the leprechaun could use that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I actually kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs> the handle's a little too big <laughs> for that, but <laughs> sure. <laughs> and here okay. is our Qui -Gon. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, he's twisty in there. Hold on. Oh, he's twisty tied? He I have tied. the scissors. No. You do this properly. Okay. You don't want to damage the goods. Oh, All right. Yeah. Oh, man. That's cool. Here, here, here. Let's put them in. So, yeah, um, they get attacked by uh, the battle droids. Well, first they get gassed, and then uh, they come out with their uh, lightsabers. Now, let's see. You got to hit them, like, here. So, we're going to reenact the thing. Okay, well, hold on. It didn't work the right way. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, battle droid. Yeah, yeah, slam it on the... <laughs> hold on, hold on. I think uh, it's not gripping the... Okay, I think I see... Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Battle droids! Can you do it? Can you know how to... It's, it... So the little lightsaber thing's got to push the little button, but it's just not making it swing. This is a very complicated toy for a kid. I really want to see what his lightsaber action's like, and it's really upsetting. Well, anyway, let's just move on there. Uh, so yeah, I don't know why they opened up the door when they were gassing them. Wouldn't they want to wait and see if the gas worked? Uh, <laughs> here, <put it. laughs> uh, but yeah, so we get a cool fight. They get the uh, battle droid. What are those things called? Droidicas? Oh, I don't remember. That's yeah, they have a cool yeah. little bubble. Yeah. And then they do a force run. They run really fast with the force. <laughs> and that was the first time I ever saw that. I was like, oh, cool. I didn't know they could do that. <laughs> um, so during that exciting uh, fight scene with Obi-Wan and uh, Qui-Gon fighting the battle droids, mm -hmm. we briefly cut to the Trade Federation guys, and we finally see Natalie Portman as Queen Amidala. Uh, hold on, pause. I'm, I'm very thirsty. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a really nice uh, Queen Amidala Taco Bell exclusive cup. I only drink out of this cup. Yes, and she looks like a geisha, um, and she's the queen of Naboo and only 14 years old, and uh, she got this... Uh, I guess a few years after Leon, the professional, that kind of propelled her to stardom. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and um, she is there. What did you think when you first saw Queen Amidala? Were you like, uh, I want her to be dress her. Is so pretty. She's so pretty. She's yes. a queen. Just girl power. The force yeah. is female. And you're like, <laughs> and you're like, I want to be the queen. Yeah. 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 I even did, I used to act like this is. Legit, no joke. I actually used to put the lipstick on, like how she has it with the little thing. And uh, it's weird. You had to add, it's weird. You had to emphasize that this is no joke, as if we were joking. It was very serious. Well, I don't normally like wear makeup, but as a uh, child, you know. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So yes, uh, she's like, "Hey, stop, stop! What are you doing? Stop it! <laughs> Knock that off! <laughs> stop this blockade! What the hell? Where are the Jedi? Uh, weren't they supposed to take care of this? And uh, they, you know, they say something, and I'm not even going to attempt." to do their voice, because that'll get clipped. <laughs> um, uh, but eventually the Jedi make it to the hangar and there's just way too many battle droids because battle droids, you know, when there's a lot of them, they're a force to be reckoned with. Are you okay? I'm trying to drink out my drink. Did the straw fall into the Queen Amidala cup? Okay. <laughs> and then 
they make it to the planet. They get out of the battle droid carrier thing and they're running away. We see all kinds of different little monsters and whatnot. And then we meet Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks. Uh, you have a little micro machine of him there. In a baby. In the Taco Bell display no. case, uh, there was a. No. 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 Yeah. There was a toy they sold where uh, <laughs> if you move his arms, his tongue shoots out. Uh, you and know what I wish I had? What? That lollipop. Yes, I wish we had I the, love the Jar Jar. sucking Jar Jar's tongue. The Jar Jar Bink sucker. I wish we still had that. It looks very appetizing. Yeah, it actually, it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Now, Johanna, <laughs> uh, I know he's a very controversial character. Misa called Jar Jar Binks. Misa, your humble servant. How? Well, I think because he's you know, like the best thing to happen to Star Wars. People, I mean, George Lucas said he was the key to all of this. Uh, but I agree. For some reason, the fans rebelled against it. I think it's one of those things they just weren't like ready for it. It was ahead of its time. Yeah, I'm, I agree. It was ahead of its time, and uh, I love the actor and everything. He's done really funny stuff on like Robot Chicken and whatnot. Mm. You wouldn't believe the luck I had. You know, are you aware of the Star Wars Black Figure series? Of course, I have little yeah. porgs. Yes, you have the porgs. Yes, and I have a couple. Uh, I have a Constable Zuvio from Force Awakens. Of course, we all love Constable oh, Zuvio. Yeah. Classic of character. Of course. Um, so I heard that they were releasing a Jar Jar from the end battle, a Black Series figure. Oh. Get, so I go to the stores, right? And a lot of these figures are gone. But Jar Jar, you'll never believe it. Every single store no I went way. to, Jar Jar, the whole peg was filled. That's actually they awesome. made. They must have made so many Jar Jars because there was they had high demand. Known that yeah. so many people want it, so they made like mass yeah. quantities. They're like, look, look. I know we're gonna run out of our Admiral Admiral Piet or uh, uh, Dexter Jetster toys. We know we're gonna run out of those. Yeah, but that's fine. But like, they were like, we can't run out of Jar Jar. He's very, very in demand. We have Disney to make... really wanted to make sure those scalpers were not making money off us. Yeah, so they made a ton of Jar Jars, mm. and they were real easy to find. And I think that was, I, we have to applaud uh, Hasbro. Yeah, thank, thank you, Hasbro. Hasbro, thank you. thank you for keeping the Jar Jars stocked in the toy aisles. I was able to get one. I was able to get several. Yeah, they Can were I just buy old... one from you? I, I know they're like marked high, but like, could you give me a you discount? You know what? I'll, for you, because you're such a good friend, and I'm in such a good mood because of Phantom Menace. I will give you a Jar Jar at a discount, and I'll even throw in, and this one must have been equally as popular because there were so many of her, a Rose Tico. Oh, my God. Yes, Tony. Now. Tony. <laughs> I have to leave Ian. Like, th this is <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean... I mean, let's slow down. I mean... This is, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Like, this is better than getting the big pork. Well, so I, I, I'm... I'm I'm, I'm about to cry. I think I think you're I think you're a little too emotional. Sorry, I can't, I can't cry. Okay, I'm not Kevin Smith. <laughs> let's, let's take a break. Take a drink out of your I'll take, I'll take a drink out of the uh, Amidala cup. Wait, what's it say on the back of the Amidala cup? Does it say? Nate Newt Gunray. Gunray. Yeah, Newt Gunray. He's the main Nemoidian. Chief Viceroy for the Trade Federation, but at heart he is a cowardly leader. Newt is a coward. He takes his orders in secret from the mysterious Darth Sidious. Ooh. Yeah. At the behest of Sidious, Newt Gunray oversees a massive trade federation invasion of the planet Naboo. Wait, is that, that what that's, it says? That's just it. Wait, hold on. Let me see that. What? Why, why is that on the back of the Queen Abadala cup? Uh, that maybe, was a weird, wait. <laughs> maybe it was like just different cup or no. Oh my God. Is this, this is the wrong cup. Oh, wait. <laughs> look, look. No. Oh my God. All right. <laughs> they so, made it freaking... Well, I think you need to go to Taco Bell. I, yeah. And say, hey, you sold me a Newt Gunray <laughs> bottom with a Queen Amidala top. All right. Queen Amidala is a top. No way. Newt is a bottom. We need to fix these. That's crazy. <laughs> You're reading it. I'm like, what the f why is it Newt Gunray? <laughs> I thought maybe it was just like, oh, here's like random facts or whatever. But like the more I'm thinking about it, I was like, wait, no. Like they, <laughs> wait, but there's a, like a Newt top. I want the Newt one. Yeah. We got to get the Newt Gunray top. What the hell? Is this one of the ones Joe gave? Joe, if this is one of the ones you gave us. What are you talking about? This is mine for my personal collection. Oh, that's right. That's right. It None of this was donated by Farpoint Toys. Like this poster definitely wasn't given to us by Farpoint Toys, which you should check out. They're mm. on the show Peg Warmers occasionally. I follow them on Twitter. Yes. Uh, and the rest of this was definitely not given to us by Joe LaScola, our good friend from Movie Dumpster. This mm. is stuff that we bought because we love the Phantom Menace yeah. so much. 
But you really should go to Taco Bell and see if they... Or KFC. <laughs> or what was <laughs> the other one? It's a KFC, Pizza Hut, and Taco Bell. Okay, so after this, we're going to find whatever one's closest. We're like, hey, hey, uh, in 1999... You'll be like, hey, I know this was like... <laughs> Very long time ago, but in 1999, I bought this, and you gave me the wrong fucking. I, I just noticed now that it's a queen on the doll with a new guy. Can you go no in the way. back? Can you so go funny. in the back? And- look, it's his like little robe thing in the front. That's so crazy. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, funny. anyway, back to this movie. Back to this very, very exciting movie. Uh, Jar Jar is honored that Qui Gon saves him from uh, the machine. I was moving very yeah. slow, and it's like a hover, so it kind of would have just knocked him over. I don't think it would have crushed him. But anyway, he thinks he was saved by Qui-Gon. <laughs> it's like Austin Powers with the thing going super slow. Like, <laughs> no! <laughs> Did you ever see the Toledo scene of that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> when his family finds out? Anyway. Uh, so yeah, Jar Jar is like, hey, I'm going to protect you guys. I know a secret city that I'm from. Uh, and Jar Jar doesn't talk like that, but I don't want to talk like Jar Jar. <laughs> Uh, but he's like, yeah, let's go into the water. And Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan are like, this guy sucks, but okay. Yep. Um, and then they swim to the Gungan City, which looks beautiful. It's a bunch of yellow balls. and every- You like seeing the balls everywhere? I love balls. Okay. Then, of course, uh, when they get to the city, they, uh, they're they underwater and they just walk through the bubble. <laughs> but-, <laughs> but yeah, they, they, they swim and then they, they it's, stand it's up a, it's straight. It's a force walk. Yes, it, yeah. so people are like, wait, how how are they walking underwater into the boat? Shouldn't they, they, they still use the be force. swimming? It's the force. Yes, it's a little known power called the force water walk. Mm-hmm. Uh, they learned it, I believe, from Kit Fisto. Mm. Uh, and it's a similar power to the force jump, the force run, and of course... The force kick. The force kick mm. that Luke did. I, I now agree mm-hmm. with the fans. I've seen undeniable evidence that it is a force kick, and I retract my previous statements. That it was a bad stunt they left in the movie. So yeah, Boss Nass chews uh, Jar Jar out because he's very, very mad at him. I love Boss Nass. You know, little Boss Nass there. And Qui Gon uh, uses his mind trick on Boss Nass. It's, it's very just, subtle too. I actually really enjoy yeah, that. He's, he's just, just kind of like, like yeah. ah, they're gonna speed us away, and he's like, oh, we're gonna speed you away. And speed is on our way. We are gonna speed you away. I didn't realize he was like a Gungan when I was younger because he's. I just realized he's like a fat Gungan, so he doesn't look like he has a beak because his cheeks are so big. Well, yeah, he's like the king, so obviously he's going to be eating more than like everybody else. He, he keeps up. He's not going to live very long. He's really I mean, got like King Henry VIII. Don't they swim? How is he that fat? <laughs> he probably doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> Or he probably has like a little carriage that takes a little ball <laughs> carriage and he's just like sitting in there like, hello, my people. I'm eating all your food. He has a tick, which I guess was representation for people with uh, Tourette's syndrome and stuff because uh, George Lucas cares. Mm. Um, yes. And yeah, he's just a really interesting character. And uh, Oh, Johanna, I think someone's coming into the store. Hey, Tony, I was in the neighborhood and I heard you were talking about Boss Nass and I happen to have the Boss Nass action figure. And this is one of the best episode one toys. I mean, he's got a stick and a ComTech chip. Do you know how cool ComTech chips are? I mean, they say lines from the movie. I think the only thing I wish they could have done better with this figure is if he had rubbery jowls so he could go But I gotta get back to working on my show, Peg Warmers, where we talk about toys. I'll see you guys. That Kevin, I love him and his show Peg Warmers. Same, it's a very, there. very good show. This feels like an episode of Peg Warmers, but this wasn't planned. Uh, yes, let's. But I wouldn't call any of these toys Peg Warmers. Like they, they sold. They sold. They, they, sold. they, they sold. They sold. Yeah. So they ask if uh, Jar Jar can come along with them to the Naboo city. Feed right. Yes. Ah, it's so hard to remember these names. Yeah, there's so many different names. Whatever. Like yeah. I, got, I, I said this to you. Yeah. What was it the other day? I have to give props to George Lucas coming up with all these different planet names and city names and everything. It's hard work. It is. It like, is literally, it is. it's very hard work. Yes. And J.J. Uh, Abrams' name sucked. Jack who? More like Jack off, J.J. I agree. So they uh, they are giving a transport uh, and they're attacked by fish monsters. What was the ship called again? The f- I'm glad you asked. It is the... Tri-Bubble Bongo, and I actually have the little micro-machine of it here. 
Look at that. George Lucas is a genius. Try bubble bongo. Yeah. I now, could I could never. Now I wanna I wanna show footage from this. But we have to be careful of what footage we show because those greedy jerks at Disney mm. will copyright claim it. So um I think we should reenact the scene. You you can be the fish monster. Okay. And I'll be the ship. <laughs> oh no! Ah! <laughs> oh! God, There's always a bigger one. Ah! <laughs> Beautiful. Did you know there was a deleted scene? No. When they get to Theed, uh, you can find this deleted scene. Uh, the ship, you know, pulls up and they park. And they're like, all right, let's go in the city. But they're, they park near a waterfall because Jedi are very smart. We mm. Cut that part out. Uh, the Jedi uh, just accidentally parked near a waterfall. They're very distracted. Um, I mean, they almost died. Yes, and the tri bubble bongo starts to fall off, and Jar Jar almost falls with it, and they got like a whole rope, and they got to rope him in. And I think they should have left that in the movie. I agree. It's a very, yeah, very sure it doesn't move the plot along. It's, an, it's, it's a nice scene, and it's more Jar Jar more, more, stuff. Yeah, more character development. It's we need it more Jar Jar stuff. I think that's maybe that's why it didn't take off because people were, they were so upset. Like they came to this movie to see a specific character, and then they were upset they didn't see him enough. And clearly, I'm talking about Jar Jar. Duh. Yes, yes. There's no other character who, who else? used in all the advertisements that they wanted to see. It was mm. Jar Jar all the way. And of course, uh, the Trade Federation, they invade the city of Theed. Mm. They, they landed in the forest and then drove to Theed. I'm sure it was a, a brilliant, uh, strategically yeah, a thought strategy, military. Yeah, yeah yes, yeah. yes. I would have probably still have some people in there, and like their big weapons to hide. Some yeah, yeah. I would have like, just oh. landed on the city, but yeah. the Trade Federation, they're always two steps ahead of me. They got the big brains, nice yes. lumpy brains. We and uh, brains. we see that the uh, the droids, the battle droids, mm -hmm. they have these things called uh, staps that they fly on. And I want to talk about it, but it looks like there's someone coming into the store. Oh, it's our good friend Eric Butts. Oh my goodness. Hey everybody, it's me, the Eric Butts. I'm also from YouTube. Did I hear you all talking about battle droids and staps? Cause you know what? Hold on, I just thought I thought. Hold on, let me find something. Got that, not there, not there, and then that's that. Okay, aha! Look what I got right here. The very first action figure in the in the three three quarter pa Phantom Menace line that they ever released. I'm so excited, I can't even talk. This is like the coolest toy Star Wars ever put out until all the ones they put out after it. It's got that awesome green power of the force box on it. Look, you can send away for a Mace Windu with a blue lightsaber. Could you imagine if they'd made like Mace Windu with a yellow lightsaber and a blue saber and a green saber? I would have bought them all. I would have bought two of all of them because that's what you do with Star Wars toys. But yeah, this is the first thing ever made. And you know, look, it's like 23 years old and it's still in really good shape, except for that one sticky pot spot, but we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about that. You don't need to know. And it's like sneak preview. Remember when they used to do sneak preview toys? That was some of your first looks at things. Remember how cool this is? This is like the coolest vehicle in the entire episode, movie, whatever, however you want to refer to it. Because you know, it's Star Wars, man. I'm gonna buy it all. Bye. Enjoy the review. Be nice to Jar Jar. I'm gonna go back down to my basement now. Wow, fascinating. Did you know that about that toy? I did not. I did not at all. <laughs> that Eric, he's great. Everyone yeah, should follow his channel and look at his trailer reactions. Yes. They're beautiful. Uh, so the Jedi save the queen and her handmaidens. One of them is Padme. Mm -hmm. Spoiler, Padme's the queen. What? Which is very obvious because they kept saying Natalie Portman was the queen, but then they said she was Padme and then... Do you know who the decoy is? It's Kira Knightley. It is Kira Knightley. Uh, never came back from the second one. No, I guess at that point, like her, like rolls out. Like everybody knows who she is at that point. So. Yeah, yeah. You know who was her like assistant decoy person in the second one? Not the one that gets blown up, but the other one. I don't remember. Rose Byrne. Ah, from, yes, it was. from Insidious mm -hmm. and whatnot. She's a great actress. And in Insidious. The, and oh, that's probably how she got the part in oh, Insidious. My God. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you know, um, she was there. Mm. Great actress. And in that movie, she sits. Moving on. Yeah. Uh, so they save her. They're going to they're gonna go to Coruscant and get help from Senator Palpatine. He's the senator from Naboo who was on Coruscant. He's in the Senate. The Senate that we never saw in the original. And we will see it soon. Then we meet the origin of my favorite character 
R2D2. Ah. Yes, and uh, you know, Darth Vader is Luke's father. Leia is Luke's sister. I mean, I think they all pale in comparison to R2D2 is Leia's mom's uh, son. Yeah. 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 I was like, that I guess R2D2's I, mom. I would if you would have told me like, hey, did you know R2D2 was Leia's mom's robot? I would have been like, that's stupid. Why? That's like a really dumb connection. But now that I'm older, I appreciate it, Johanna. Of course. I like that all of these characters are connected forever throughout multiple generations. Yep. It's as if the galaxy Stays should the just family. yes, as if the galaxy should just kill all of them because they seem to be the problems for everything. <laughs> Um, oh, and the Naboo Star Cruiser, when it's getting away, it's piloted by, uh, I believe the character's name was 85 and Alien 3. Hmm. You know what people should YouTube search? Alien 3. I, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. And if I'm wrong, it might be Gorman from Aliens. I forget which actor it is. But still YouTube search Alien You 3. should still search just, YouTube, just YouTube search Alien 3, but I'm pretty sure it's 85 from Alien 3. Yeah. Might be Gorman from Aliens. <laughs> um, they kind of look alike. Uh, yes, so they get away on their Naboo Star Cruiser, which of course is in our Taco Bell display there. Uh, it's nice and silver and shiny. Now, I know we hate him because J.J. Abrams helped ruin Star Wars, but he yes. did pay tribute to Phantom Menace in Force Awakens. Did you know that Captain Phasma's armor was made of a Naboo Star Cruiser? And that's why it's shiny. I did not know that in... I don't personally understand the connection, why that needed to happen, but I'm sure there's a reason. They explain it in the movie, I'm sure. Maybe it got cut out for time. Uh, huh. But apparently, apparently they wanted to make her silver because J.J. Abrams likes Phantasm, wants her to look like a Phantasm ball. And someone said, well, we got to explain this. And someone said, what if her suit is made out of a Naboo Star Cruiser? Or it could just be shiny because she's like no, a higher No, it's a Naboo rank. Star Cruiser. It's to honor... Phantom Menace. Okay. It's the honor okay. Phantom Menace. Okay. As we all should. This movie we now love. So, Darth Sidious, he's having a hologram thing with uh, the Trade Federation. The, yeah, the Nemoidians. Federation. The Federation. The Federation. Uh, the Federation. Tra the Trade Federation. He's having a meeting with them uh, and he tells them like, hey, I'm going to send my boy Darth Maul. Ooh. And we finally see Darth Maul. And I want to recreate his entrance for you right here. So I have a mask here of Darth Maul. I have the talking one somewhere, but I don't know where it is. Oh. Now, remember when Darth Vader first shows up in the original film, he shows up uh, around a bunch of dead bodies and he's looking at them menacingly and then he's choking a guy out. Yes. Darth Maul has a very, very similar introduction. Okay, I'm gonna... I'm not the best actor, okay? <laughs> so here's a reenactment of Darth Maul's first scene. Joanna, can you be Darth Sidious? Sure. Okay. And just say, I'm sending my apprentice, Darth Maul. I am sending my apprentice, Darth Maul. Oh my God, I got chills. I got chills. <laughs> I got chills from how cool that was. <laughs> what a way to introduce it's a great. villain. Just it's great. Just, just. Just standing behind another bad guy and looking. I mean, other people it's because he's scary. Other uh, yes, they, they have to hide how badass he is in the beginning because we don't want to have that spoiled. That like you know he could literally murder anybody at any moment. I guess so. I guess so. Uh, but yeah, so they introduce him in a hologram, just standing there looking yep. at them all weird, and uh, and Johanna, uh, little little secret about me. I was so into Darth Maul that uh, sometimes I uh, would try to be like him and do his moves and stuff. Hmm. Well, lucky you. I actually found a tape with you doing just that. No, 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 oh, no. Oh, no, we're playing it. No, Jessica, don't play that. Don't play that. That was uh, it was actually pretty embarrassing. Thank you for that. I think it was fantastic. Like, 
they should just recut the scenes and put that in. You really think it was cool? That was super cool, Tony. I, I practice a lot. Yeah, I, it, I was think, su- it was super cool. See, I practice a lot just in case one day I meet Ray Park and I really want to impress him. And I think he'll be impressed. You've yeah. now given me the confidence to show that tape to Ray Park. You're welcome. And Anything bet, for you, Tony. Yes, and I bet he'll be like, you know what? I'm going to call Lucasfilm. I'm going to tell them, hey, I found the son of Maul. His name is Tony from Hack the Movies. (laughs) (laughs) So what's one planet that we can never get enough of in the Star Wars universe? Tatooine. Tatooine. We love Tatooine. I love sand. Oh, God. I love love sand. (laughs) It's coarse. It's rough. It gets every... I love sand. Um, (sighs) Yes. Yes. uh, They... Sand. (laughs) Their ship gets damaged. Uh, and they land on the planet of Tatooine and they have to look for a part to fix their ship. And they're like, we'll go to one of the smaller dealers to get a part. Uh, and then they go to one of those smaller dealers and uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, my throat's a little dry. <coughs> Ugh, okay. You okay? Yeah, I'm just going to take a sip out of my Watto cup. Uh, at least that has the correct bottom. So yes, Watto's here. Uh, and do you want to know a little bit about Watto? Of course. Okay, Watto is a... I have the correct. Yeah, you're right. Yep. The correct. Watto is a you junk... crotch in the front. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, Watto yeah, is a is. junk dealer. I don't know why that's in quotation marks. I mean, that's literally what he does. <laughs> junk dealer. Oh, because the crotch. Got it. Yeah. Uh, Watto is a junk dealer who lives on the remote desert planet of Tatooine. Is it really remote or desert? Everything happens there. Uh, Watto loves haggling and betting on pod races more than anything. Betting on a pod race is how he won his two slaves, Anakin and Shmi Skywalker, mm. from Gardula the Hutt. Mm. Any relation to Jabba the Hutt? You know what? Later on, Jabba the Hutt does show up, and there's another hut behind him. Could that be Gardula the Hutt? Mm, maybe. 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 And it is here. I believe maybe like an hour or something into the movie where all movies should introduce their main character. We meet the most important person in Star Wars. <sighs> Anakin, Anakin Skywalker. Skywalker. He walks in. He's a slave. He, he's good at building stuff. And where were you when you first saw this poster of his shadow projecting the the Darth Vader? You didn't realize wow. that, right? Oh, I never realized that before. So the teaser poster, it's, it's oh little God. kid Anakin walking in the desert and a shadow of Darth Vader being cast. And it was it I'm was assuming amazing. the helmets from like his bowl cut. Yes, okay. that's specifically why they okay. gave him the bowl okay. cut. Played by wow. the incomparable Jake Lloyd, who we all love from shit, it's all the way over there. Uh Jingle All the Way. Ah. Uh yes, very, very classic actor. Jingle All the Way, and I think he was in something else. He wasn't in a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean He got bullied for no reason. Yeah, I mean, he did kind of suck, but it's like, it's a kid, who cares? Like suck? That was Oscar-worthy. You're right, you know what? He's a great actor. He has very memorable lines, which you can hear when you get the Anakin Skywalker action figure that comes with a backpack and a grease gun. It's a grease gun. Yeah. Something Italians use, they use to do their hair. Sure. I can say that, you know. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, here are some of his... They screwed up. No, they didn't. What's the word that replaces cool in the prequel universe? No. It's wizard, right? Yeah. This says wizards. Multiple wizards? No, it's one wizard. Hasbro raises... Has- yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna Terrible. send this in. I'm going to send my proof of purchase in. I'm going to say, please make a correction to the Comtech chip Anakin Skywalker action figure. That is the wrong thing. He says wizard, not wizards. But anyway, let me tell you a little bit about Anakin Skywalker. Mm -mm -mm. Only nine years old, Anakin Skywalker began life as a slave on Tatooine. After winning his freedom, spoiler, he will train to become a Jedi. Mm. And uh, here are some other lines he says. I'm a person and my name is Anakin. And I know we're in trouble. Just hang on. This chip interacts with Padme and R2-D2. So, yes, uh, Jake Lloyd, we get to see what will be the biggest villain in all of Star Wars, Darth Vader. But as a just as a young, naive little boy, full of life, 
Uh, and it's a good contrast to what happens later in the other films. Mm, mm. Uh, so yes, Watto uh, doesn't want to give them. Wow, you can get ten Jedi Master points. That's awesome. Yes, I, I'm going to oh. demand a hundred because of that misprint on there. Mm. Um, now Qui Gon is trying to negotiate with Watto, mm. but mind tricks do not work on Watto. Only money. Credits will do fine. No, they won't. Um, yeah, so. They're debating over, like, you know, give me this. Nah, it's not worth that. I don't take Republic credits. Uh, but if you look really close in the background of this scene, you see the pod from 2001, A Space Odyssey. It's pretty awesome. The Stanley Cooper classic. And uh, it's there because one great sci-fi film should pay uh, respects to another equally as great sci-fi film. So this is George Lucas looking at Stanley Kubrick and say, hey, I really like what you did. I too am now making the greatest science fiction film ever made. And you're passing the baton to me, George Lucas, as I make the Phantom Menace. So that's why they threw in the uh, pod from 2001 A Space Odyssey mm. there. It, it's good to respect your elders. Of course. Uh, but, uh, however, Kathleen Kennedy doesn't respect her elder, George Lucas, uh, when she took his franchise and ruined it. Mm. Why doesn't she respect him? Does, does, does she think she's like his peer because she might have produced all those movies with him that made him famous in the 80s? Most likely, And she yes. thinks she's on his level? <laughs> no. Mm. She didn't make Naboo. No, she just made things woke. Yes. And this is very, very not woke. Mm. Anyway. Right. Sebulba is a jerk. Yeah, he's just kind of an asshole. Yeah, he's yeah. like sitting there and he's like, bah, 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 bah. Yeah, money, money, you know. <laughs> and he's a racer. A uh, pod racer. You know, we always heard of how people are flying things around Tatooine. And we never saw what it was. Mm -hmm. Turns out it's pods. Uh, and he's like the guy to beat. Uh, but our heroes get stuck in a little sandstorm. Oh, Padme's there. Mm. The queen's handmaiding, who's actually the queen. Uh, they get stuck in a sandstorm. But Anakin, who is not Darth Vader yet. Because yeah. he's a true hero in this. Yes, he wants to help them. Now, I know some people were like, that's Darth Vader. Why isn't he trying to kill them? Where's his mask? And it's important to know that this is before that. Yes, yes. So he he helps them. He's like, hey, come to my house. Meet my mom. I'm going to introduce you to a robot I made. Mm. Now, I know I said uh, Amidala being R2-D2's mommy was amazing. Who would have thought in the same movie they would top themselves? Atticon is C-3PO's daddy. That's right. I, See, I Darth Vader is a da daddy. Dar Dar Darth Vader's daddy to three people. Daddy to Luke, three people. Luke, Leia, C-3PO. And daddy to Am uh, Amidala, too. Padme. That's a different kind of daddy. Um, <laughs> it's a, it's a, this isn't a crystal episode. What are you doing here? It's a different daddy. It's a very different daddy. Actually, Crystal's walking in right now. Oh, yes. Crystal, do you have something to say about naked C-3PO? Hi, guys. I heard you guys talking about naked C-3PO. I have a toy right here. <gasps> so uh, he says a whole bunch of stuff like, uh, hello, I am C-3PO human cyborg relations. How might I serve you? My parts are showing, oh my goodness. And uh, what do you mean naked? He's naked, who doesn't like naked C-3PO? My favorite toy. All right, bye guys. Oh, that crystal. Ha! What a, what a character. Ugh. She really loves naked C-3PO. She really does. I understand. I, I, I get it. She just loves naked things. I'm always yeah. like, put more clothes on. Ugh. And she's like, no. And I'm like, ugh. Anyway, Anakin tells them what life is like on Tatooine. Apparently, it's not cool. No. Uh, They put a chip in your head that'll blow you up uh, if you try to get away. Uh, and he's trying to build a scanner to find whatever that is mm. uh and shmi is like yeah you know i'm a slave too and i just hang around the ha what does she do as a slave i don't know i want to say by the way they have like a nice three-bedroom apartment yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like I, it's pretty roomy george i i don't know if i was trying to show slaves i'd show like terrible living quarters and yeah. maybe have shmi doing something instead of just being a happy homemaker like yeah. this is it doesn't really it's a little some people would say it's a little song of the south but you know not me i would never say that that's what disney would say because they made that movie 
they're the real racist. Anyway. I don't know what you're talking about. It doesn't, like, doesn't exist anywhere except for Splash Mountain. It was always so confusing when I was a kid yeah. on Splash Mountain. Yeah, I was like, what is this? Is this an original I think we mentioned idea? that before. Yeah. Like, every kid has that moment where they go on Splash Mountain and they look at Br'er Rabbit and they go, what movie is this from? Because everything else is like an IP. And then it's just like, oh, was this supposed to be like an original idea? Is like, that on the app? It's not on the app. <laughs> Spoiler alert. However, you know where you can get Song of the Sound? <laughs> Uh, Facebook Marketplace. They're always yeah, selling always bootleg copies. copies. Yeah. Uh, and they also sell bootleg copies of Star Wars, the despecialized edition, mm. um, which I am against because it doesn't honor George Lucas's true vision. I agree. And I think all those uh, people who pirate that stuff and uh, sell those bootlegs, they should all be thrown in jail because it goes against George. Mm. Okay, but they know this is the world we're living in where Kathleen Kennedy is turning people against the genius of George Lucas. I mean, we have to correct this wrong. It's true. We have to correct this wrong. Now, uh, they come up with a plan to get the peace. They're going to build Anakin's pod back and enter the race to win the money to get the peace. Yep. And Qui-Gon is going to fix the race and he's lying to Watto and making stuff up and... Uh, why doesn't he just steal the piece? It's not the Jedi way. But it is the Jedi way to fix gambling stuff. They're not stealing. They're, te know. they're technically just... Hmm, I wouldn't say cheating. <laughs> they're kind of cheating. They're fixing the game. They're cheating. But they're bad guys. Jedis? No, the other people. Oh, yeah. Well, no. They're all terrible people. So technically, is it really cheating? Because yeah. it's for a better cause. I think Obi-Wan should have been like, Obi-Wan should have called Yoda and been like, hey, I think Qui-Gon is uh, kind of losing it. He's <laughs> hanging out with a little boy. I'm just going to go steal the piece. <laughs> I need to get out of here. <laughs> um, so he could just like kill Watto and stuff, but apparently he doesn't do that. Oh. Jedi way. And now this was very, very subtle. Only filmmakers like true filmmakers like George Lucas and Zack Snyder do this kind of subtle uh, symbolism and imagery. Mm. Anakin apparently had no father. Whoa. It was a virgin birth. Wow. Now, does this sound familiar? Of course. It's it's Jesus. Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus. Just, oh. Thank you for the Phantom Menace. Yeah. Yes, and uh, I didn't pick up on this as a kid, even though I went to Catholic school. Um, but yes, I was like, wow, that that's kind of like Jesus. It reminds me, you know, years later, Man of Steel, when they have uh, Superman in front of a picture of Jesus mm. saying that he's yep. afraid he's going to die because he's 33, and that's when Jesus died. And then that scene where he goes like this. Oh, and no, I'm, am I going to die this year? Yes. Uh, well, only if you're like Jesus. Of course I'm like Jesus. I, I follow his word. Like, oh my God, I'm chased. Like, <laughs> yes, you are. Very chased. Um, but yeah, so I like, I, Zack Snyder must have watched this and learned how to put like deep seated, like symbolism and subtext into a film from mm. the master George Lucas. Mm. So he's going to rebuild his pod racer. And later on tonight, I'm going to build my pod racer. I got the Anakin... Anakin's pod racer uh, kit here, the episode one kit. Uh, yes, you know, it comes with the, oh, oh, Jesus, Watto fell. How dare you? <laughs> I'm sorry, Watto. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm dropping everything. Cool. You can put the stickers on it. That's yeah, the dope. stickers are there. Um, yeah, it's got everything. Oh, it's a well, very, very you know, detailed. Like electricity stuff or whatever? It's a very yeah. detailed kit. And um, like so like I said, much like Anakin, I too will be building the pod racer. And when I'm finished, Johanna. That's like pretty sick. Johanna, when I'm finished building this pod racer, I will call you and scream, it's working! It's working! I don't care what time it is. You better do that. It's working! It's working! Four in the morning. Johanna, it's working! Well, if you're going to call me at four in the morning, make sure it's 420. <laughs> Can you put that over there in front of our Taco Bell display case? So Qui-Gon tests Anakin's blood to see how much religion he has in him. And Obi-Wan tells him, it's like, wow, he's got a lot of religion in his yep. blood. And Qui-Gon's like, whoa, more religion than Yoda? And he's like, whoa, Yoda wishes he had this much religion in his blood. So I thought that was mm -hmm. really interesting. Because before, we didn't know how much religion they had in them, the Jedi. It's like Obi-Wan, it's like, okay, 
but like, how Jedi are you? Can I test your blood to mm. see the Jedi levels? Uh, and of course, this movie fixes that. Of course, um, of course. So Darth Maul shows up on Tatooine the night before the race, looking around, and he's like, I know someone's here. Yep. Something's up. I'm going to find that really bright chrome ship that's in the middle of the desert and really easy to see and not being hidden anywhere. He couldn't find it. Mm. He's going to send some balls out to look for them. Mm. Not even going to look himself. He's just going to send the balls Ball out. Balls. <laughs> um, now there is a new bet made for Anakin's freedom. So in mm. addition to the part, yep. they're also going to get Anakin's freedom. He tries to argue for the mother. Doesn't work. Uh, and he's like, okay. Well, it's, it's You have to choose between the two with the dice. Yes. It was like, what was it? The blue for Anakin, red for the mother. Yes. And then it landed on the blue. And because... That, well, because he cheated yes. at the game of dice, which is the Jedi way. Why didn't you just steal the piece? I feel like he's wasting a lot of time. Um, it's character development. Yes, but then we get to the Bunta Eve classic. Mm. And Johanna, I found the Micro Machines uh, playset of the Bunta Eve classic. Look, we got Whoa. little, little Watto here. We got a naked C-3PO. Naked C-3PO. I was like, oh my, oh, I'm naked. We got little Anakin. Unfortunately, I can't find uh, the tie, the uh, pod racers that actually go with it. Mm. Um, but look, we have this little uh, droid guy here. Uh, whoop, whoop. So you put your pod racer there, and he's all like, here's the engine for your pod, sir. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. Uh, and if you can put that over there somewhere. Uh, and the Boots Eve Classic is actually a miniature model. Don't, no, don't. That's that's going to fall. That is going to fall. <laughs> You're playing a dangerous game there. <laughs> I swear to God, that's going to fall by the end of the, no, the video. Um, I believe in myself and the force. The Boots Eve Classic is actually a miniature uh, where they put little Q-tips in it, colored, and like a fan to make it look like the audience is cheering. Hmm. Uh, and some of the miniatures are actually Star Wars toys, and one of them is Prince Zizor from, uh, what's it called? It's the me nervous. Yeah, I told you! <laughs> Prince Zizor. It didn't fall. Prince Zizor from the uh, Shadows of the Empire series. Remember that game? I do. And that book and everything that yeah. Kathleen Kennedy erased when she took Star Wars over? Bring back Shadows of the Empire's continuity. Bring it back. Hashtag whatever. So then we get the very, very famous pod racer scene. The scene of the movie, a lot of people oh, yeah. think it is. And uh, we also get a nice look at Anakin's a pod racer nice and finished. Whoa, that's what the pod looks like? Finished? Heck yeah. Oh, that is awesome. It comes with a little Anakin in the seat. Yep. Oh, that's cool. It's got a little handle where you can fly Check it. Check this out. What? Whoa! Oh my god. All right, so when you squeeze it, the, the big like arms and stuff open up. That is so cool. What's underneath it? What's the orange stuff underneath it? I think it's just part of the ship. Ah, okay. Uh, the yeah. Pod's part of the... <laughs> so that is an awesome pod racer. You knocked over Anakin with your other Anakin. Now, Johanna. Yes, Tony. The Pod Racer inspired many video games, and one of them is known very, very well. If only there was someone here to tell us about Star Wars Episode One Racer. I hear someone coming into the store. Oh, hey guys, that reminds me about Star Wars Episode One Racer, the game about pod racing. Well, anyway, I have to go talk about games on my podcast, Talk About Games. I'll see you guys later. Man, they're great. I'm a big fan. Got my own copy. Now, there's a location in this scene. Yeah, there is. And uh, it's the same... Uh, valley that was used in Book of Boba Fett when our favorite character M Mando, aka Din Djarin, yep. uh, is flying a Naboo starfighter, yep. which we may talk about later. Mm -hmm. um, again, paying tribute to Episode One because now people know that oh, yeah. it is a great film. Oh, it yeah. is a great film. Uh, and yeah, he went through the same canyon, and apparently they never fixed that uh, little little thing blocking the ramp. They just left it to That's honor fun. the memory of Anakin. Yeah, why not? So yes, he wins. He beats Sebulba. Everyone is happy. They're all so happy. Uh, but then Anakin gets sad because he has to leave his mommy and train to be a Jedi. 
Uh, and he's like, okay, I guess I'll be a Jedi. And if you want to know more about this scene, listen to the Weird Al Yankovic song that sums up the plot of the film. My, my, Mr. Mr. Anakin guy, maybe Vader someday yeah. later. Yeah. yeah. Uh, great song. Playing oh. on repeat all the time. I actually really like that song. Yes. One day when I get married, I that will be the song I dance to. Um, and I'm sure whoever I marry will agree with me. I, yeah. Uh, yes. So. Darth Maul's droids, they finally find where they are. And he takes off after them. Yes, he does. In cool. his Sith Speeder. Sith Speeder? Sith Speeder. <laughs> Sith Speeder? Sith Speeder. It's a Sith, Sith speeder. speeder. This is the Sith Attack Speeder. It's slightly different. It's cool, I guess. Uh, same idea, though. Uh, but yes, uh, Darth Maul, he has a nice little Sith Speeder. I have this uh, nice boxed one here. This is like from the official yeah. line. What does it do? This? Oh, shit. <laughs> Johanna is trying to play with the Taco Bell exclusive one, or the Taco Bell KFC, whatever, exclusive one, uh, where you pull the little cord and then it takes off. Yeah, crank that cord. Go. What? Oh. Okay, well. With a piece of tape or something? Okay, right, ready? Right Go, go, Sith Speeder. Sith Speeder. Sure. So, yeah, these were one of the uh, many toys that they gave away at Taco Bell. Again, we have them all on that display. And, uh, Johanna, I wanted to surprise you. I got you a Taco Bell toy from one of those. It could be one of those toys. You'll never believe which one it's going to be. It's a mystery. This hasn't been open since 1999. So, open it up. Surprise no yourself. No way. Surprise oh, yourself. What could it be? What could it be? Oh, I hope it's the Tatooine planet that opens up and turns into this a pod racer. Here. I hope it's the uh, the Naboo cruiser or maybe the Wado or the Sebulba. I'm so excited to see this toy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What is I'm it? Shaking. What is it? No way. What is it? It's another Sith Speeder. Oh my God, it's another Sith Speeder. It's a Sith Speeder. It is a Sith Speeder. It's a Sith Speeder. We have four, five Sith Speeders. <gasps> we, we're going to be rich. Oh my God, this is the greatest day of my life. We're going to be rich. Like, how much could this possibly be worth? Like, I, I'm saying this is probably 500 bucks. That's probably uh, 600. Yeah, uh, oh my God. Oh my God. We're retiring early. Oh, yeah. We're retiring early. <laughs> oh, man, movies. that is so crazy. Can you believe a Sith Speeder? Sith Speeder. So is Sith like a brand? Do they the Sith have been <laughs> the Sith have been extinct for a thousand years? We learned, but is there <laughs> is it a guy who's just like no, no, we're it's the same name, but it means something different. It's like an old family name. It's not related to probably, the Sith. probably. Yeah. It's kind of like you know, like there's the goddess Isis in Egypt, and then yeah. there's other guys. Yeah. It's like no, no, it's a different no, no, we're not yeah. not affiliated. Yeah. It's just a coincidence. I swear to God. Yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, Darth, Darth Maul attacks them. Mm. Uh, we get a cool lightsaber fight. And, uh, you know, I'm glad we got a lightsaber fight in the middle of this film to wake the audience up. We've been going for a little bit. We might want to wake our audience up. Uh, we should have a little lightsaber fight. Oh, let's go. You ready, Joanna? Been ready. Oh, ow. Oh, <laughs> Anger is not the way of a chip. I, I broke my ass. I win. I broke my ass. I won. Uh, or I'll, that actually wouldn't happen in George Lucas's Star Wars. Uh, woman beating people with the lightsaber. That's the woke Kathleen Kennedy. So you should have actually taken an L for the team. But if you want to support Kathleen Kennedy and her ruination of Star Wars, that's fine. Ruination. Let's, <laughs> yeah, let's move on. Uh, so they get to Coruscant. Which is a very, very original looking city. Mm. Uh, it's a very big city with flying cars everywhere. I mean, I've never seen a Blade Runner or the Fifth Element. No. Uh, people like to compare them, but I, I doubt they look no. as good as this. No, there's no way. No, this looks way busier yeah. and whatnot. It's a, it's very original. Mm -hmm. So they meet who we, the audience, knows is Darth Sidious, mm -hmm. and will one day be the Emperor. But for now, he is. Senator Palpatine. Ooh. And I have the Senator Palpatine figure here. He comes with the Senate cam droid. That's right, because there were a camera droid in the Senate flying ah, around. That's right. I don't think that was his personal one. I think that was just 
there. Yeah, I think it was yeah. just there. Uh, but yeah, do you want to hear what he says on his contact? Of course. Leader? Well, first, let me tell you about him. A political and tactical mastermind, Senator Palpatine represents the people of Naboo in the Galactic Senate and engineers his own election as Supreme Chancellor of the Republic. And he says, The Republic is not what it once was. And he also says, The Senate is full of greedy, squabbing delegates. And of course, his last one is, You see, Your Majesty, they will elect a new Chancellor. And Ian McDermott comes back. He's very, very young in it. Uh, and I I was just so eager with anticipation to see him become the bad guy. Oh, yeah. But the movie is really good. Like, there's no way you would possibly know that he's Darth Sidious if you didn't see the other movies. Oh, like, yeah. It's like yeah. there's just two different people who sound alike yeah. and look alike. Apparently, when he's not a senator, he puts on a black robe. Yeah, you can't see his face. No one ever catches him in that black robe. No. And everyone's like, oh, you're wearing the black robe again. What's up with that? Yeah. Uh, you were wearing purple earlier. Why did you make wear the black robe to make this phone call? You want to change real quick. Mm, I guess so. The, the, the people of, business. The people of Naboo, they love to get dressed. Queen Amidala is getting dressed every five seconds in this film. Okay, we'll put uh, Palpatine there. So Anakin goes with Padme the Sen and Senator Palpatine. Palpatine convinces Padme, like, hey, the new chancellor, who was General Zod from Superman mm -hmm. 2, uh, he's not doing a good job. We got to vote no confidence and get him out. Get him out. Uh, so, yeah, Palpatine, he really wants to just drain the swamp that is the Senate. He wants to get rid of him. Uh, and he uh, convinces Padme to get the Senate to, you know, get rid of him. Yep. Uh, elsewhere, the Jedi, they listen to Qui-Gon tell them about the Sith Lord that he interacted with. Uh, and Mace Windu and Yoda are like, um, yeah, that sucks. Hope that's not a thing. Yoda, interestingly enough, was a puppet in the theatrical release and the VHS release. Trained as a Jedi, you request for him. Hmm? Mm. But when it hit DVD and uh, Blu-ray, the CGI, they to, to better because George Lucas is a perfectionist. His movie needs to be perfect. Even movies he didn't direct but that he technically owned, he needed them to be perfect. Mm. Not really caring about what the directors wanted, uh, especially the one that was dead. He was just like, whatever, can't do anything, mm. I'll change it. Uh, he even changed this one a few years later, and it's like, yes, uh, Yoda is now CGI, so he better, better reflects what he looks like in the rest of the series. Now, any other filmmaker would be like, hey, this new Yoda, let's make him look like he did in the old movies, so it connects better. Mm. He, d he did the opposite because George Lucas doesn't play by the rules. He's a rule breaker. I mean, he's not supposed to look the same because it's a different time. It is so. a different time. It's like yeah. 30 years before, right? Yeah. Uh, like They say it's like 30 something years before. Now, the Jedi are unsure about Anakin. Qui-Gon wants to train him and they're like, nah, he's too old. We didn't meet him in time. Uh, he's, his vision is, his future is clouded. Uh, we're very, we're very unsure. And Qui-Gon's like, well, I'm going to train him. Obi-Wan, you're on your own, buddy. You're promoted. And Obi-Wan's like, oh, okay. Mm. Kind of forget Obi-Wan's in this movie. That's what I want. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's kind of like he should have been a bigger part. Yeah. But Maybe. I understand, like, you clearly, you, you got to go for Qui-Gon. Like, yes, yes. This character no one knew existed yeah. until this movie. Anyone else would have just made it Obi-Wan. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. our breaking ground. Uh, yeah, so they decide to go back to Naboo. Mm -hmm. Uh, the queen wants to go back to fight the Trade Federation yep. against what the Chancellor wants. Uh, and the Jedi are like, hey, the queen's going back. Go with her. It'll probably lure out the Sith guy and you could capture him. We'll question him because they're space cops. Of course. So they land back on Naboo. I, I guess that blockade just missed them. They were just super stealthy. They are. They're very stealthy, yeah. and they're very shiny ship that yeah. reflects yeah. a lot of light. Yeah. Uh, and they go on to oh, the Oh, that's plane. what it reflected, so they weren't able to see. Right. It reflected black of space. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Didn't work earlier in the movie, but this time it worked. Well, they figured out how to utilize it better. Right, right, right. Don't the ships have scanners? Don't worry about it. Okay. So they land on the planet, and they meet the Gungans in their secret hideaway. And the Gungans are like, we don't want to work with you, Queen Amidala. And then Padme speaks up and everyone's like, 
who's this chick speaking up? And then it turns out she's the queen all along. That plot twist oh, still gets me every time. Yes. Eve, it was who could have guessed it except for the fact that the queen was credited as Natalie Portman and Padme was very well, they clearly. Could have just been like a stunt double or something. Maybe she just wanted to do the stunts or something. You never know. I guess. I guess. I guess. I, I thought it was a little, a little weird. You never know. Uh, but then this leads us to our exciting finale. Now, there's several different things going on here. Let's start with the Gungans, mm. who are meeting on the battlefield to attack the battle droids. And uh, Jar Jar and his boys, they use something called a Falumpus set. Do you know which one that is? No. Well, let me tell you what it is. Or better yet, show you. So I got the Falumpus set here with the ammo wagon, which of course, wow. you remember the scene, the ammo wagon, the yeah. balls fall off. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's take it out. Let's try it. You want to play with some blue balls? Hell yeah. Yeah, I know you love those blue balls. I love blue balls. You love handling them. You love giving them. Anyway. All right. So here's uh, this piece here. Uh, this is going to take a second to connect. Okay. Here's the... the is this a falumpa? I guess this is what they call a falumpa, which is this four-legged animal. I'm going to pass these over to you as I build them. Oh, and by know, the way, what do you think? I'm not going to lie. The detail in this is actually really good. What did you think about the detail in the CGI in the film? Oh, so much better than this. Yes. I mean, you know, on Naboo, it turned or yeah, actually. I thought, I thought they were real. Like, I actually had to, like, go Google later in life and be it, like. Are it's you weird. Sure and real? none of the other uh, Star Wars stuff do any of the monsters look weirdly smooth. But uh, in the prequels, they all look a little too smooth. Uh, but I guess it's like a unique animal that they just weren't able to do in the original films. Uh, okay, looks like I have the thing to connect the wheels here. And by the way, if you're listening to this on the podcast version, you should really be watching the video <laughs> to see all these cool things we have. Okay, I got the ammo, the ammo carrier here with another ball in it. Like a bantha. <laughs> yes, he actually does go on that. Thank you for doing that for me. I built the ammo wagon. He, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, he actually, where does he go? He goes, he goes here. Oh, my God, why isn't he going in? Oh, wait, he goes there. Okay. Don't worry, I got the ball. <laughs> okay, I think I have it figured out. Uh, you have the one ball there. There are two balls. Of course. Yes. As there should be. Uh, well, I mean, you gotta share. Like one person gets to shoot one, the other person gets to shoot okay, one. Okay, so these hole, these go into these holes. Awesome. All right, so here's the falumpa. Now, do you wanna? Oh, you can shoot the first one, and I'll shoot the second one. Oh, yeah. We're gonna take turns shooting the falumpa set. Oh. <laughs> Trina, I think you're enjoying this just a little. Uh. Whoa! Now take it out of the ammo case. Take it out of the ammo case. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. All right, load it. Now I want to shoot it. Okay. Oh, shit. oh no. <laughs> <The falumpa. laughs> oh, I forgot his spear. Hold on. This guy made a weird, like, he had a weird voice. He was like, oh, no, 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 and uh, here's a we said go! Whoa! Oh, that was cool. Mine went further. Well, let's not brag about whose balls are better. Okay. Uh, if you could put the Falumpa set over there. Now, that's just one part of the finale. The other part is Queen Amidala storming the uh, castle to take over the throne room. Girl boss. Girl boss. Uh, she's trying to take over the throne room and get Newt Gunray, who is a coward according to the bottom half of your cup. <laughs> and then the other uh, fight that's happening. Cowardly leader. Yeah, Anakin, he gets in a Naboo star cruiser and takes off into space. With R2. With R2. This is not the first time a Skywalker is teaming up with R2. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if you don't remember what the Naboo star cruiser looks like, it looks like this. Whoa. Oh, a little R2 in there? His yeah, head turn? Could, actually, if you wanted to, we could open up Anakin and put him in here. Oh, that's you cool. You want to open Anakin up? Or did we lose him? Oh, I here. Yeah, open Anakin up. Let's throw him in there. 
Oh man, people love the sound of 22 year old toys being open and no longer perfectly preserved. They love it, it's their favorite thing. You got it? I don't like that your tongue's out whenever you play with a toy. I it's making me really uncomfortable. Stop doing that. Stop, put your tongue back in your mouth. Put it in, it's weird. Stop it. It's just my face, Tony. It's just my face. Uh, we don't need the gun, I just need I Anakin. need the grease gun. <laughs> Okay, here we go. You lose that gun, I'm gonna make you lose your head. Come on, R2. This needs a grease job. Psh, psh, psh. All right, we got little Anakin here. We're putting it. Oh god, we're putting him into. Oh yeah, finally. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. The chip. Name: Anakin Skywalker. Status: Son of Shmi <gasps> Skywalker. Owned by Watto. Ooh. And here we go. Ooh. Now there were batteries in this. It doesn't work right now. But yeah, you got little R2 up here. He's like beep, 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 beep. So Anakin. Touch it. It's sticky. Oh yeah, I don't like that. So Anakin, uh, he's a really great pilot. Like his son will be one day. And uh, Johanna, he uh, comes up with a way to uh, thwart his enemies by doing a certain trick. Would you like to demonstrate the trick that he does as he's being attacked? Here, I'll, I'll do the star thing. We'll recreate the scene here. Don't use any footage of the movie because Disney might come after us. Kathleen Killity. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Here I am, a droid starfighter. I'm coming for you, Anakin. How are you gonna get away? Let's try spinning. We don't fall out. Whoa, yeah. spinning. Oh, God. Johanna, would you agree that spinning is a good trick? Yes, and then he blows up uh, the battle. Yeah, you can do a lot of spinning with that. <laughs> he blows up the droid control ship, right? Which destroys the droid army. Queen Amidala takes over the, the throne room. Uh, and that only leaves us to one more thing. One more loose end we got to wrap up. This is in the Mandalorian. Well, it's going to be in the Mandalorian. This is the yes. Boba Fett. This is the Mandalorian. Okay, you now. done? I'm trying to wrap this up. <laughs> Just throw it on the pile. No, no, throw it on the pile. Throw it on the pile. So, Johanna, we finally get to see the final fight of Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon versus Darth Maul. Now. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. So. Now, now, when you're a kid, you're like, that's two Jedi. How is Darth Maul going to take on two of them? How does he do it? Dude, my. Oh. I have never been so hype in a movie in my life. Both sabers cool. Oh. Double lightsaber. Oh. And I'm like, oh my God, that's genius. That's how he fights the two Jedi. So he's fighting and fighting. And again, I would love to show footage of this, but I can't because it's such a big scene. I can't trust Kathleen Kennedy, but I got good news, Johanna. I have the feed generator battle complex set right here. As a battle droid. Yeah, remember when the battle droid was in this seat? There wasn't a no. There was no, no, there was no battle droid in this part. But anyway, you want to recreate the scene? Of course. Okay, we'll leave the battle droid in there for now. We don't really need him at the moment. Can you hold on to this? Shall I open it? Yes, Johanna. While I'm doing this, can you open up? Darth Maul. Of course. Even though it's not the one with the double lightsaber, I'm sorry. And I think Qui Gon. Oh, that's some bull. And uh, whoa! And Qui Gon. Can you open up Qui Gon? Qui Gon. Qui Gon. Wow, Johanna, we put that together in no time, didn't we? So fast. All right, let's put, uh, I'm going to put Qui, I'll be Qui-Gon. And you could be the Sith Darth Maul. Okay. All right, put put Darth Maul on your side. <laughs> Where the fuck is the fucking hole? There we go. Uh, oh, here. There we go. Do you, do you need help putting it in the okay, hole? I need help putting it in a hole. <sighs> I can't put it in the hole. 
I can't find the hole. Ooh, hold on. Everything's falling apart! That's okay, Johanna. I have experience putting things in holes. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Of course, I mean toys. Of course. Because I have a lot of toys. <laughs> Duh. It's been several months before since I put something in a hole. Mm. Uh, just bear with me here. You want to call okay. Ian? Ian has some experience. We, like We finally have it. Day. Okay. Now, we're going to recreate when Qui-Gon Jinn fought Darth Maul. Uh, the wheel is around here. Okay. Are you ready? 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 And... Da, da, da. <laughs> oh no! He died. <laughs> <laughs> and if we had an Obi Wan toy, he would be like, "No!" <laughs> now, this is a cool thing here. Ready? Oh God! Let's let's do this at the same time. I'm gonna put Qui Gon here. Uh huh. No, this here. Uh oh God! Boop him. All right, at the same time, we're going to hit the buttons to, to launch them. Okay. You see the button? Yeah. All right, three, two, one, go. Oh, wait, is that? Oh! Ah! <laughs> 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 he keeps dying. <laughs> see how Qui-Gon dies. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very sad. It's so and sad. And it leads to this amazing fight with Obi-Wan and Darth Maul one-on-one. -on -one. He even splits the double lightsaber down, oh, got, so he's down to just one. But I got worried because at one point, Darth Maul had the high ground. This is the most amazing thing. Now, we know later on that having the high ground means you're going to win the fight because... <laughs> because. Uh, but in this case, Darth Maul had the high ground. He did. Uh, at this point, I'm just like, are we sure Obi-Wan is not the chosen one? He was able to and, jump over him when he had the high ground and yeah, cut him in half. And Darth Maul like, clearly underestimated his power. Yes. Like, it's crazy. And Darth Maul foreshadows, as we know later on, Darth Vader, because he too did not die from this. Yep. He he got turned into a robot spider. Yeah, he's and like then a spider. Just, and then just a regular robot leg man. And then he d did something with Han Solo at some point, and then he died again. And I'm sure he's coming back. Hmm. So, yes, uh, he dies. Uh, Qui-Gon dies. And he's like, train Anakin. Make sure he he's the chosen one. Make sure he doesn't become Darth Vader one day. And Obi-Wan goes, what? Uh, yeah. So then he's just like, Obi-Wan, he goes up to Yoda. And he's like, I got to train the kid. And Yoda's like, why? You're under no obligation. He's like, well, I'm going to do it anyway. And he's like, okay. Um, and they want to know who this Phantom Menace could be. And then it cuts to mm. Ian McDermott's, this is blocking me. It's gonna throw off the <laughs> autofocus. It cuts to Ian McDermott's Senator Palpatine. Mm. <laughs> Big glowy ball! I used to love those going into Spencer's, whatever, and the like, little staticky balls and touching it and it's static. I was always afraid if you cracked it, the electricity would shoot out and like melt you. You're an idiot. I was eight. <laughs> You're an idiot. Oh, no. You're an idiot. Oh, how smart I could have been Did you there. think it was real lava and lava lamps too? <laughs> <laughs> idiot. I thought so. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we see peace, but we know there won't be peace. Peace! Yeah. Peace! So it's a peace that will not last. No. Uh, so it's a bittersweet ending. But yeah. Very Star Wars. Phantom Menace. And again, the Star Wars has a bad name now because you look at Star Wars and it's like, oh, it's just Disney wanting to sell a bunch of shit. Yeah. But it's nice to go back to the 90s when Lucas just wanted to be a storyteller and he wasn't worried about the profits or merchandise. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. just wanted to entertain people yep. and not force his politics or feminism on anyone. Yep. That's why yep. I now love Star Wars The Phantom Menace. Yep. If you love Star Wars The Phantom Menace, let us know. Leave a uh, comment, like, share, and subscribe. You gonna launch the ball? We so free! Uh, leave us a lovely review if you're listening to us. I'm sorry for this episode. This is a rough episode to listen to. You're gonna want to watch the YouTube version. <laughs> when I came up with this idea like a year ago, the podcast feed was not a thing yet. Yeah. And uh, I just never modified the idea. My bad. <laughs> um... And you know what? Just because Kevin stopped by earlier, everyone should check out Peg Warmers yeah. where they they do what we did. 
but a lot better. <laughs> also, like we've we talked about a game. Yes. There's this other thing called Talk About Games. Talk About Games is another podcast you could check out. Now, there are very few uh, Star Wars fighting games, yep. but they do exist. Mm-hmm. And I hope one day they're talked about on the new fighting game podcast, Triple KO. Uh, yeah. Really great podcast. Really by, good. Uh, Matt McMuscles, Justin Wong, and Maximilian Dude. Mm-hmm. Really, really fun show. Uh, check that out. Check out all our podcasts. And uh, happy anniversary video release of Star Wars Episode One. Remember, it would take months for a movie to come out. Yeah. On DVD, like now it's like the next day, basically. Yeah, it's yeah. like six to like it was like six or seven months for yeah. something to come out. And now it's just like, what? what is it? It's now March. Sp- Spider-Man came out in like November. Yep. Although Spider-Man took a little bit longer than other things. But I remember uh-huh. like, uh, what do you call it? Venom came out in like September. And it was just like on Blu-ray by like November. It's like, yeah. oh, why did mm-hmm. I see this in theaters? Yeah. Why did I see Venom 2 in theaters by myself? What a loser. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was fine and fun. Sure. Uh, yes. So that is it from us. Uh, follow all the things. Let us know what your favorite piece of art from Star Wars Episode One is. And uh, I know they made some toys. We talked about a couple of them. Let us know what your favorite Star Wars toy is. If you can remember. I mean, I'm sure there wasn't too many. Uh, and Where's yeah. the Black Series Jar Jar? I moved apartments. It's in a box somewhere. Mm-mm. It's nestled safely somewhere with my Constable Zuvio. <laughs> okay. I talked about it on Peg Wars. I really <laughs> want to write like a buddy movie with Jar Jar Binks and Constable Zuvio. Oh my God. <laughs> that is it from us. Goodbye. Oh my God. We can stop pretending to like this piece of shit. This is awful. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talking, talking about tapes.